Marquise Hollywood Brown takes his talents to the Kansas City Chiefs. According to Ian Rapport, a one-year $11 million. Uh, Hayden, we just want to remind the people that have checked out all of our other videos on the channel. Throughout free agency, we knew that Calvin Ridley was going to get paid. But maybe the wide receiver move we were most intrigued by was Hollywood Brown and where he would end up because we still think he's a super talented player. Could there have been a better fit, a better oh, landing man. spot on a one-year prove-it deal than with Patrick Mahomes and this Kansas City Chiefs offense? It's been a while since we've seen the best of Hollywood Brown. He's dealt with injuries. He's dealt with offenses that weren't be best suited for him at the time. And because of the production dipping recently, that's why he had to take this prove it deal. No better team to take a prove it deal than with Patrick Mahomes, because he's going to put up ridiculous numbers here. They obviously have seen an undersized downfield playmaker, uh, which Marquise Hollywood Brown can do. Does he have some limitations? Sure. Most of them are size related, but this guy still has tons of juice. And when I like watched his free agency stuff, versus like the players I've been watching in the draft. To me, there's just a, still a huge difference. Like Marquise Hollywood Brown is a special player in my eyes, can definitely Ooh, work. Special. Down. Yeah, I mean, he he works downfield from the perimeter. Like most of these guys with his body type yeah. have to be like in the slot. Like we talked about that with Jerry Judy and some other players throughout the free agency stuff. I don't think Marquise has to do that. Is he fantastic in, against press? Not really, but he's definitely serviceable against. And I think that Patrick Mahomes has found somebody and part of the offense they have lacked, they're going to put him in that MVS role, and he's just light years better than MVS, obviously. <laughs> um, so I think I'm I'm very bullish. Like before this signing, he was 109th in underdog drafts. I moved him up into the mid 60s. Uh, I think this we should be more optimistic about Hollywood here than we have with the Chiefs wide receivers. Yeah. Again, in the first two minutes, I want to reiterate that. Hey, and I aren't just glowing about Marquise Brown now that he's a Kansas City Chief. Like we were glowing about what he still can be just based on watching his games last year. And honestly, in the first eight games when he was playing with Josh Dobbs and whoever else, he was having to make like difficult grabs over the middle of the field, tight coverage, late balls, inaccurate passes, so on and so forth. Um, and so I think he does play a bit bigger than maybe some people give him credit like for, right as there. we just see right there. Um, now, some negatives. I think one of the main reasons why he had to take a one-year prove-it deal is because at the end of the 2022 season, about halfway through, a foot fracture placed on injured reserve. Then towards the end of last season in December, uh, a heel bruise. So he basically finishes the last two seasons due to foot injuries. Mm -hmm. um, that can be crippling for wide receivers. Quite important, your feet, when you try to run routes and things on top of it. But what does he bring to this offense? There's the obvious, but maybe let's dig a bit deeper because obviously Rasheed Rice really came on as the season went along in the second half and into the playoffs. 52% uh, of his passes were zero to nine yards. 27% were behind the line of scrimmage. 15.3% were in that 10 to 19 intermediate area. And just 5.3 were deep downfield targets. This past year, and actually really since Marquise Brown has been attached to Kyler Murray, he hasn't been great on the 20-plus yard just connection and catch rate and all that stuff. But still, 22% of his targets last year were 20-plus yards on the field. 27% were in that medium area. So I think this combination of Rasheed Rice doing that yards after catch short um, of of 10 plus yards down the field and maybe he can still grow and develop like we saw like just a handful of true wide receiver routes from him last mm -hmm. year travis kelsey continues to sit in soft areas and demolish zone coverages and now we get hollywood brown just to be that more intermediate and vertical player this already brings an element that they didn't have a consistent name to it last year if he can stay healthy it also puts less pressure on them with that 32nd overall pick that they have to yeah. draft a wide receiver offensive tackle still uh, would be a priority there if they have to trade Legarius Sneed. Uh, obviously, corner would go into play. They can still draft a wide receiver with some size potentially in the first or second round if they want to, but it just makes this team have a little bit less pressure to find the next wide receiver because I do think that Hollywood Brown is a massive upgrade. He's basically, I think he's the best wide receiver they've had since the Tyreek Hill trade. I don't think it's really that close. And I, I think Rasheed Rice is a, is a good player, uh, but I think that like his where he wins is like less impactful and it's a little bit harder to find somebody that can work downfield, like with the ability that Hollywood can. And I also think Hollywood, like the mesh stuff, the screen game stuff that Andy Reed whips up. I think we can still see some of that for, for Hollywood as well. 
Um, I don't want it to sound like an exaggeration when I said Rishi Rice actually ran like seven downfield routes that equaled in targets last year as to come off again as exaggeration because it wasn't. That was like legitimately the truth. There's <laughs> one of them kind of. Um, and you mentioned Tyree Kill. And that's not to, you know, belittle what Rishi Rice is doing. He plays a significant role in this offense and he's really good at what he does now. We just don't know how much more that can be improved immediately just entering year two. Uh, this is from Next Gen Stats. Marquise Brown has reached 20 plus miles per hour on 33 routes since 2020. That's the second most in the league behind former chief Tyree Kill. Now, the gap is pretty significant. The gap is hilarious. <laughs> 73 to 33 is hilarious. <laughs> but then after that, you know, Brandon Cooks, 31, MVS, 28, Jalen Waddle, 26. Mm -hmm. So again, that shows you the juice that we believe Marquise Brown still has. Um, now, about 26 and a half, nearing 27 mm -hmm. years of age. Uh, we did talk about this fit potentially happening. Shout out to Pretty Ricky, who's been over it for quite some time. The People's Insider, um, he mentioned that it might be in the backside of a Legereus Sneed trade or getting that cap space off. It sounds like Legereus Sneed might be sticking with the Chiefs after all. Well, that's that's the big point here. It's $7 million up to eleven. It's based off the incentives, the, those you put them on the books. And the Chiefs have been fantastic with incentives as sure. of late in their contracts. Yeah, and we saw Mahomes take a little contract restructure to save some of the money. So I think they might have just kept Chris Jones, kept Legereus Sneed, yeah. added Marquise Brown, and then probably would draft a left tackle. Maybe they throw Tyron Smith out there. Who knows? I'm not putting anything past uh, Brett Veach at this point. So I think that's like the other big point with this contract is because they were patient, they were able to get a better deal versus Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney. Like the fact that Darnell Mooney got more money than Marquise Hollywood Brown is yeah. ridiculous to me. The fact that uh, Calvin Ridley is getting like four times as much money as Hollywood is insane to me. It's very similar types of players in my eyes. Um, and the credit is because they have this championship level team and teams, players like him on a prove it deal. Why wouldn't you go attach yourself to Patrick Mahomes? So it's just the benefit of having an elite coach, an elite uh, quarterback. You just start paying the dividends uh, with guys that want to come over here and take less money. And on the heels of the Deontay Johnson trade to the Carolina Panthers, Mike Garofalo was on NFL Network and mentioned that the Chiefs did call about Deontay Johnson and the Steelers refused to trade him to the Kansas City. <laughs> They're scared to compete. So, again, um, having this deal and this player still out there. Like, again, just pure guys that we knew was going to hit free agency. To me, it was Calvin Ridley, and then it was Marquise Brown, and then there was a pretty big cavity. Yeah. after that and for him yeah. to land in this spot is is just exceptional stuff yep really is um now for best ball this is gonna be really funny i'm just gonna pull this up this is my like right right off the presses rankings before this uh acquisition travis kelsey patrick mahomes pacheco were already being drafted in the mid 40s rasheed rice was going ahead of them now that Br marquise brown's there rasheed rice is also going to probably go in the 40s so we're gonna have four different chiefs being selected in the fourth, fifth round. So we're going to be like trying to stack the Chiefs because obviously you want to double stack if you can. Sure. I'm curious how high up Marquise Brown goes. I have a feeling that you and I are going to be higher on him than the market. Like we've talked very glowingly about him here. I have him in the 60s here, but it's just going to be funny that like five Chiefs are going to be selected very similar to each other. And in a game that rewards stacking, it's going to be very interesting to how uh, we're going to be able to pick apart Rasheed Rice, Kelsey, Pacheco, Mahomes, and now Hollywood Brown. So uh, just really interesting stuff. I have Rasheed Rice a little bit ahead of Marquise Brown. I'd rather take Travis Kelsey than both of them at this point. Um, but we'll see what the market kind of decides on. Okay, that does it. As always, hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. You all have been loving these reaction videos of why X player signed or X team signed Y player. And we've enjoyed putting it out there and we'll enjoy it even more on Monday when we have a new Mock draft on the way. All right. Talk to y'all next time. See you.